Okay, hi. Uh, I'm going to try and make this not too long of a video. Uh, I think the Raspberry Pi 4 by now is not new news to anyone. Uh, it's been out for a while. I personally haven't bought one up until now, just simply because my Raspberry Pi 3s basically have done everything that I've wanted them to do. Plus, in the past, the Raspberry Pi 2s, 3s, and so forth were always around the like $35 mark or so. And you didn't really even think about it. You just order one. In fact, I found myself a lot of times if I was working on another project and I didn't really want to reconfigure uh, one of the pies I already had and kind of leave it be, I just buy another one and buy another, you know, plastic case for it and just build another one. That's how cheap they were. The Pi 4, on the other hand, is a little bit significant, is a significant more expense over the Pi 3. I think it's uh, like $55 now, so it's about $20 more. And that's for the 4 gig model. Anyways, um,. The uh, Pi 4, uh, like I said, I, I kind of just dove into uh, finally buying one. And I kind of wanted to show off my uh, little setup here. Uh, just show off uh, what I've got set up. And, uh, you know, just kind of give my perspective here. So real quick, I want to show the case first. Um, this is a case that was uh, shown on the Crosstalk uh, Solutions channel. And that's actually where I saw it for the first time. And... Uh, he did such a good job showing it off that I actually said, "Well, that's kind of cool. I kind of need to. I kind of need to own one of those." And of course, I needed a Pi Four to go in it, and that kind of was what springboarded me into uh, finally buying a Pi Four. So, real quick about the case, a really cool feature is this magnetic top, and uh, not only can you open it up and uh, get access to your GPIO, but they've actually silk screened, let's try and get a good angle here with the camera. They've silk screened all the labeling for the pins, so that's pretty handy. Also, there's a pad underneath here, and this this is, I believe, aluminum. Uh, this is uh, acting as a heat sink for the Raspberry Pi 4, so that's pretty cool. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job. I haven't, like, really uh thrown that much at it yet but uh i have been running it for uh, several hours now uh, tonight and uh it's barely warm to the touch so that's kind of cool all right so uh if you're familiar with the raspberry pi 3 you'll know that immediately the difference here is that the ethernet is normally on the left side and the usbs are on the right uh differences here is uh they're swapped as well as the Pi 4 has a USB 3.0, the two blue USBs in the middle. So that's a nice upgrade. Uh, all on the other side here, as far as the connections is concerned, um, big difference here. Um, power is through USB-C. That's the far left one here. And they have taken out the full-size HDMI and replaced it with two HDMI micros or minis. I guess, I guess these are actually uh, micros. And the cool thing about that is you can run dual display, as you saw at the beginning of the video. And then uh, they did retain the 3.5mm uh, or 8th inch um, jack for audio as well as composite video. So, anyways. Alright, let's get back to the cool stuff. Um, the keyboard, this is the Raspberry Pi keyboard, the official keyboard that they, uh, they started shipping. I like it. It's a little bit smaller, but I've, it's not so bad. It's a... Uh, Fairly comfortable to type on. Uh, neat little Raspberry Pi uh, image there in place of where I guess the Windows key would normally be. Uh, it's kind of a chiclet kind of a uh, keyboard. Uh, the keys the keys are nice. They have a good feel to it. Uh, neat feature is they include a three port hub. So uh, take this thing from this uh, micro USB to the uh, to the Pi itself. And they've got a, uh, a hub here. And I conveniently have plugged the Raspberry Pi foundations uh, matching mouse into the keyboard and then of course you got two more slots there for you know a thumb drive or whatever whatever you might be working on but let's uh, talk about uh, this pretty cool thing here so I've got two HDMI monitors these are monitors are uh, good for HDMI DVI and VGA but obviously I need HDMI to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 so I've got two of these guys running, and you can configure this so that it's either a duplicate of the uh, the desktop, so this desktop can be duplicated, or it can be a uh, stretched desktop, some people will call it, where you can um, move uh, a window from this side over to here, and vice versa, and so forth. So I've got it set up like that, because I that's personally how I like to work um, in Windows, so I did the same thing here. 
Um, as far as performance is concerned, uh, this thing's pretty good. It's fairly snappy. Uh, I was able to pull up uh, Chromium, the web browser, and do a little bit of web browsing. Not too bad at all. It was a little sluggish to start at first, but then it seemed to uh, kind of catch up. Uh, this is um, Libra Office running uh, their spreadsheet. I just got kind of a fake spreadsheet I created in here. I was just playing around and um, worked just fine. Uh, over here, I'm running an amateur radio application. If you're uh, if you're an amateur radio, you might be familiar with APRS. And this is the uh, Linux version called Xaster or Zaster. It starts with an X, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Anyways, that's a fairly intensive program when it's running. It's uh, you can uh, have it connected to a radio. You can have an internet feed and so forth. Again, if you know about APRS, you know more about that than than the average viewer that may not know about it. But that's a fairly intensive program, uh, especially the mapping when it's loading maps. Uh, it can be a little bit sluggish, but on the Pi 3, it was even slower. So this really isn't bad when it comes down to it. So anyways, uh, try, like I said, I didn't want to make the video too long, but I just wanted to give a little overview of what I got set up here. I'm looking forward to playing with this over the next uh, few weeks anyways. I have plans to kind of move this setup into my main office uh, on a shelf just above my main monitors that I do all my video editing and all my programming and stuff like that on. So kind of hoping to have this set up where I can kind of fire it up and play with it anytime I want and don't really have to uh, go through the trouble of setting everything up. And I am looking forward to kind of uh, throwing some more uh, things, projects at this thing, uh, connecting some stuff to the GPIO and playing around with it. So uh Hopefully I'll do some more videos about that in the near future. So thanks for watching and talk at you next time.